class I told you how to uh, calculate the electric field with integrals and I said that you have to, I gave you that uh, table you have to watch out. Sometimes it's a one-dimensional linear integral, sometimes it's one-dimensional but on a curve so you have to um, uh, use polar coordinates and you always have to set up the integral correctly and several of you said you had no idea how to do that especially in 2D. So I said I would uh, make a video on how to do it. So that's what this is. Um, really I'm doing example 23.8 in the book. So 23.8 does the field due to a charged disk. Okay, So if we draw a circular disk like this, and it says we're trying to calculate uh, the electric field at some height from the disk uh, x. Right? So we're moving up a distance to our standard point p, moving up a distance x. And what do we get there for the electric field if the disk has charge density sigma? Right? So sigma is coulombs per unit area. So what is the field of P is the simple question. So to see how to draw um, this or how to set up this integral correctly, what we want to do is go ahead and draw this disk again but look straight down on it. So we can draw it as a circle. Okay. So there's the center of the circle. The point P is now floating out here somewhere above the board a distance x away from the center of the circle. We know that the uh, radius of the disk is R total radiuses are, they told us that. So what do we uh, do to figure this out? So in all of these problems, what you have to do is divide the charge up into small little pieces of charge. When it was a line, you just took a little piece of the line. Uh, when it's a surface charge, characterized by sigma, you have to find some little area, a differential area element. So the way we're going to do it here is start at the center and go out some distance r, little r. And then we're going to consider that all the way around the circle, like this. And then we're also going to go out another distance, r plus dr. Okay. So this one goes to r plus dr. So we're considering radii and then a little bit of an increase in the radii. From r and then to r plus dr. So that little distance right there is dr. So that would give us a strip. Uh, going around. And this is how the book solves it. It just says calculate the area of that strip. But I really want to show you the two-dimensional integral. What you could say is we did that at one angle, but then we can move over uh, d theta and look at it here as well. So here is r and r plus dr at say theta equals zero, and here if we move in the theta direction is r and r plus dr at uh, theta equals zero plus d theta. Right? So d theta right there. And then this is our little area element that we want to consider that gives us charge. Okay. So if we were to blow it up, it would look kind of like this. Where we have uh, where this element of area. And if we were to draw it out here, maybe it would look something like this. It would be sitting out here somewhere. And here it is. And you would say, okay, what is the field at P due to that little area element? Well, you would draw a line and say it must make a field like that, DEP, due to that little area of uh, uh, piece of charge. So here it looks like this, and now we've got to figure out what is the charge DQ on it. DQ equals um, sigma times the area of this thing. Well, what is the area? Well, the length across is basically what radius you're at r uh, times d theta. Right? That's the arc length across there. And then the width here is dr. So the little differential element of area is just uh, sigma, or is just r dr d theta. So this area r dr d theta times sigma is the charge dq. r dr d theta. So now that we have dq, in terms of the important variables, we can sum it up to get the total field. Because this is the field, this is the piece of field, DEP, due to this little piece of charge. But then the way we've set this up, we can cover the whole disk. Right? We can integrate from the radius, from all the way from 0, all the way out to the full radius big R. And at each radius, we can go all the way around 2 pi. So it's just like a one-dimensional integral when you integrate along to get all the charge. Here we just have to do it in two dimensions. And since it's a disk, we naturally want to set it up in polar coordinates. 
So we look and we say, what is DEP? DEP is what? Well, it's uh, Coulomb's constant, K, times the charge, sigma r dr d theta, sigma r dr d theta, over the distance from, uh, uh, from sigma, or from d sigma, out to uh, the, the position. And we can see what that is from this diagram. Here, this is the distance r. So big R is the whole disk. Little r is where we're at when we're moving around integrating. And of course this, which I'll draw, make more sense to draw it there, is x. So we have a right triangle here. And the distance then is the square root of r squared plus x squared. It's that piece right there. But of course in the bottom of Coulomb's law, that is squared, so the square root squared is just the, the thing, so that's x squared there, r squared plus x squared in the bottom. So that's the magnitude of DEP. But now we have the standard uh, thing that happens all the time in these problems, and that is that we need to put this in terms of its two coordinates, or in terms of, terms of the two axes, uh, x and y, because this little d sigma uh, d uh, piece of charge is going to make a DEP like that, and then one out here is going to make one like that, and if we added them all up, we would see that their horizontal components are always going to cancel. We really just want the vertical component. So for this thing, we just want to add up the vertical components like that. So that we figure out based on this angle. We can't call it theta, because we use theta for going around the disk. So this angle is completely different from theta going around the disk. This angle has to do with where we are in R. So we give it a new name, we'll just call it phi. Okay, so we can tell just from looking at this that if this is our magnitude DEP and we want that component, then there's our right triangle, uh, the cosine is adjacent, so it must be the cosine of phi is what will give us the right component. So we put the cosine of phi here. Okay, and we went and called this x, so we're going to put i hat. Okay, so we made the x axis vertical instead of horizontal, we're still going to call it i hat. The j-hat, we know is zero. I'm not even going to write it down. We know that all the horizontal components will always cancel, so we're not even dealing with the j-hat component. It would be a sine phi if you wanted to write it down. Okay. Now, we look at this, and this is our full DE, DEP. Now we want to integrate it. And when you look at this, you know what you're going to integrate it with respect to, whatever you have a differential element of. You have dr and you have d theta. Okay. So we're going to integrate over r, and we're going to integrate um, over theta. So what you want to do is get everything in terms of r and theta. Everything in here has to be a constant, or r, or theta. So we start looking. k is a constant. x is actually a constant in this case. We're getting the field or distance x away, and that doesn't change. So x is a constant. Um, sigma is a constant. There's r, there's dr, d theta, there's r, phi. That's the problem. That one is not a constant. As we move around in r, it's going to change. So we need to put in an expression uh, for phi. Uh, that will vary with r and maybe theta. So there's the angle phi. We can't get the value of it from, from those two vectors, but we can get it from here. We know if that's phi, then that is also phi. And now we have a right triangle, and we can say, okay, the cosine of phi must be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it must be x. So this just repeats r squared plus x squared over sigma r dr d theta. And uh, it must be then x over that square root. x over the square root of r squared plus x squared uh, by half. Okay. So now we're going to uh, take the integral. Use this. Give ourselves a little room here. And now we're going to integrate both sides. We're going to integrate both sides. When we take the integral of DEP, we always just get what? E, D. And now we're taking an integral, and we have two uh, differentials in it, a dr and a d theta. And that's because physically we're going to vary r to cover this whole disk, and we have to vary theta to cover the whole disk. So what we do then is just write two summation signs, and we literally do the integral twice. Okay. So let's just write it down twice here. So one, two. And then let's just write it again. Let's get all the constants out to make it look nicer. K, K, sigma, um, x is a constant. Okay. And then 
then let's look, keep all the R parts here, um, R, D, R. And then on the bottom, we have R squared plus X squared to the 3 halves, right? We have it to the 1, and to the 1 half, you add that, that's 3 halves. And then, uh, let's see, what are we left with? And then just d theta. And we have to think about the limits of the integration. So we're integrating, uh, let's do theta is this one. Theta, to cover this whole disk, we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi. And r, to get this whole disk, we're integrating from 0 out to the total radius, which is big R. So now, the integral is now set up. All we have to do now is take the integral, take each one in turn. Okay? When you take the integral with respect to the theta, you just ignore the r's, or you just keep them constant. When you take the integral with respect to r, you keep the thetas constant. So in this case, the simpler integral is the d theta integral. So you just take that one first, integral of, zero, of d theta from 0 to 2 pi. Integral of d theta is just theta. I evaluated it at 2 pi and evaluated it at 0, and really this just multiplies by 2 pi. Your book, that's all they did. They didn't even show you this integral. They just put in 2 pi because they said that's the distance going around here. So I was just trying to show it more explicitly. So now, we'll take a little pause and uh, we'll do the integral for you. So here, to save space, I have uh, erased everything and here's our integral up here that we're trying to solve. As I said a minute ago, um, the integral with respect to d theta is uh, straightforward because this all is treated as a constant. None of this depends on theta. So it's really just the integral of d theta from 0 to 2 pi, which really, of course, is just 2 pi. Right? So the integral of d theta is theta. Theta evaluated at 2 pi is 2 pi minus 0 is 0. So if you'll permit me, again, to save space, we'll just erase the integral and uh, say that it's equal to, uh, to 2 pi. So now we have to uh, deal with the integral um, for r. Right? So we take out the constants 2 pi k sigma x. Those are all constant uh, with respect to r. And the integral from 0, well, let's go ahead and uh, evaluate it. The integral of uh, r dr over the third root, uh, over r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves, you look up in a table and you find that it is uh, negative 1 over the square root of r squared plus x squared. So remember, x is a constant in this problem. So here we pulled x out as a constant. Here we couldn't pull x out because it's added um, to r. Anyway, so that's uh, the evaluation of the integral. There's several ways you could have done that. And that's evaluated from 0 to r because to get the full area, we have to add up this contribution from 0 to R. So then we get 2 pi k sigma x, and uh, let's see, when we evaluate this at uh, little r equals big R, it's minus 1 over the square root of big R squared plus x squared minus, and then let's see, so evaluated at 0, that's minus minus 1, so plus 1 over the square root. And we're evaluating this at r equals 0, so the square root of x squared, which of course is just um, 1 over x. The rest of the problem I won't bother to finish. Pretty much you distribute the x, and you find that when you distribute the x, this becomes 1. So the answer is 2 pi k sigma 1 minus um, x over the square root of r squared plus x squared. Same answer uh, that they get in the book, and I forgot to keep writing it, but we have this in the i hat here. And that's the problem. That's how you do the full problem integrating over an area um, in polar coordinates.